My name is Jane Wilson. I'm a mixed media fine artist, so a full-time artist who works in a variety of media. Very, very rarely just work in one, so just purely acrylic or purely watercolour. I tend to throw everything at a painting um, because it's more fun like that. So my background, my background is conventional O level, A level, I'm in my 50s, so it's pre GCSE times. Um, foundation, uh, this is all in L London. And then a negotiation with parents on going to art college. A fine art degree was not on the cards. There was no way I would have been supported for that. But an HND in textile design was much more acceptable. And actually, being the late 80s, early 90s, it was a very sensible thing to do because I came straight out of art college and straight into a job um, in the middle of a recession. So that was cool. And also, I was going to say the downside is it wasn't a fine art degree. So there wasn't the um, the artistic navel gazing, but in a really good way that you would get from that kind of exploration. But I think I've done that during the course of my life anyway, because that's how I'm built. I overthink things. I, I think deeply about stuff and life. I think the majority of artists do. So the textile HND gave a grounding in theory, colour theory, composition, technique, uh, it was screen printing. It was uh, HND and surface pattern textile design in brackets for furnishings. So it wasn't woven, it was flat. And yeah, it was, it taught me lots. It taught me lots that I use today in my art practice and knowing younger people who have gone to university and studied art degrees, they haven't had that kind of grounding. They are very much left to just think and be it's not what I would have expected it to be I would have I think I would have hoped for some sort of artistic training um, because we all benefit from that we all benefit from being taught how to look how to see um, but also how to use utensil utensils use art equipment use media you learn the rules then you can break the rules but I do think a solid grounding in colour theory, composition and how to paint, how to draw, I think it is is a great grounding. Yeah. Anyway, and now I break all the rules because I, I enjoy doing that. So that's my background in terms of our education. How does this impact how I see the world and how I create art? Um, my textile design definitely comes through. I, I love paper. I love collecting stuff. So I'm a bit of a hoarder. Um, I use a lot of collage in my work. For a long time, I painted on old maps and book pages, years before anybody else cottoned on to the idea of doing it, because I say I am in my 50s, um, known as the map lady. And I had quite a lucrative career doing it. But then Instagram became very big and I realised the world and their mother were doing um, paintings on book pages and maps and the like. Um, oh, there's lots of ums. Sorry about the ums. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> but now I use the book pages, maps, <coughs> college material. <coughs> shush, baby. Shush, shush, shush. <coughs> in my mixed media work. No. Shush. He talks. He's got terrier in him. He talks a lot. Um, yeah, okay. And now I've lost my thread. <laughs> um, I think this was more of an intelligent question. So it says, uh, by themes, concepts of my childhood or background. Um, I've... It's funny how little you change. The politically aware, lefty, environmentally conscious Jane from her teenage years is still there. 
and those themes do emerge not the lefty liberal side but the ecology ec ecology the environment nature mind i talk about mindfulness a lot um i'm currently studying a course in miracles i'm not religious but i'm very spiritual and i do believe we are at a turning point where collectively we have to do something otherwise well there's a choice it all goes pop or we all come together and save it um and i'm i'm with the positive i'm with the let's all come together and save it so those mindful themes come through in my work i have made work about animals that have become extinct and areas that have been lost on maps so exploring maps and seeing boundaries and it makes you think of war it makes you think of persecution it makes you think of things which were there that are not there things that are lost I'm not I'm not so keen to explore that anymore in my art I'm keen to look at the positive I'm keen to look at yes there are memories and the memories are there but we're not defined by our past we have a future and we can create that future so I want I think there's a question later on about what you want people to take away from your work i want people to come away positive i want people to come away with a smile on their face okay who was my biggest influences um art wise matisse um, my first love my last love i just everything everything he does is just incredible everything he did was incredible um, but I really like Tracy Emin. I like what she says. I I'm trying to think about not artists, non cultural figures that inspire me. Hmm, they're not that many really. There must be. I might come back to that one. I can't think. Animals inspire me. Good people inspire me. Good people who do good things despite of their circumstances. So probably the sort of people who inspire me are just ordinary, what everyone else would call ordinary people, ordinary people that do good things. Uh, what's your biggest challenge being an artist? Making a living from it. That I am still... Yeah, I think that is my biggest challenge. I don't have a challenge when it comes to ideas and creativity. But it is my job, it's my passion and it's my purpose. And it's a fight. And that's... Shh. I paused it. He could hear a dog barking outside. Uh, yes, so the biggest challenge of being an artist. Uh, I think I've worked through all of the imposter syndrome type challenges. Um, I think they're good, actually. I like that because it makes you show up and it makes you strive to be better. So, yeah, so, yeah, for me, the biggest challenge is actually being able to balance the creativity with the earning money from it so that I can do it, so I can do it more. I just want to do more of it. Have I tried any unconventional mediums or techniques? I would try anything. I've tried making my own colours from the earth. I um, I often use bits and bobs that I found on beach walks in my paintings. Um, yeah, so anything can be a brush. I scrape with stones. I scratch with bits of uh, fishing, leftover fishing tackle. What do they call it? Ghost nets, that's it. Ghost fishing. Um, yeah, so I'd, I don't know if that's really that unconvention, unconventional because so many people upcycle things, but I do use printing in my work. So I will collagraph and monograph collage papers um, and then use those within my paintings. Do I listen to music or other audio? I tried listening to audio books, <laughs> but then I can't do both you multitasking is not a thing it's not 
not a good idea. So, yes, I listen to music. I have lots of soul, jazz, funk um, playlists that I have going on that I bop around to. But sometimes I do like the silence. Sometimes I like just getting into it. But being sometimes a little bit of a tortured soul, I if I listen to music, it shuts off the voices in my head. And I quite like shutting the voices off sometimes, it's depending on what they're saying to me. Um, but if they're in a happy place, then I'm quite happy to have them accompany me. But if they're being a bit naughty and if they're telling me off or giving me a hard time, then I um, I listen to music. What's the best reaction someone has had to my artwork? Um, I think I said this earlier and it also ties in with the last question. What do you hope people take away from my artwork? Happiness, joy. When somebody comes to an art fair or into the gallery in Polpero or open studio, whatever, and they just smile and go, oh my gosh, this makes me so happy. Well, that's it really, isn't it? Job done. Um, I know there are people who make work that's got great angst and explore very painful subjects. But for me, if I think that somebody is hang has, has hung a piece of my work in their home and they walk past it and it brings a smile to their face then that brings me huge joy huge huge joy